What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Sins of a Solar Empire 2. I actually had no idea, I knew that it was confirmed that it was like coming, but they actually did a stealth drop onto Epic. I don't think they publicized it that much, it almost snuck by my radar. But I saw it this morning and they've got the alpha testing build up for about 40 bucks, which I feel like is fairly pricey. For what the game offers right now but if you are interested in sins of a solar empire and wanted to get in on the ground floor and check the game out it is available on epic as of right now and so i shelled out the 40 bucks so that i could fall on the grenades so that you wouldn't have to we're gonna dive on in today and take a look at the game for 25 to 30 minutes and see how it sits with us now i did buy the first game on release day when it came out oh so many years ago and i remember enjoying it but i don't particularly remember too many details i think i played it for like six months and then just never played it again like i enjoyed it but i was playing other things at the time like diablo 2 and unfortunately i think that used up all of my available memory but for right now sins of a solar empire 2 it's currently available on epic i assume that they probably have a steam release coming at some point in the future it may be kind of far out i've noticed that like what a lot of development teams are doing nowadays is they're using like epic as like the double a leagues where they release like the really buggy really beat up version of their game onto epic and then they just let it ride for a year or two while they sift through and sort feedback and like fix the game and like make it look nicer and then they treat steam as kind of like the big leagues with their triple a release and so they'll launch it over there after a year or two of bug fixing and polishing I don't know if that's actually becoming like a thing but it feels like it's becoming a thing from time to time I don't know I don't really monitor epic too much anymore they kind of slowed down and I hate their interface and so I haven't really messed around with epic too much but sins of a solar empire 2 might have ended up being too much of a temptation so we're gonna play it 25 30 minutes the link is down below if you wanted to check the game out for yourself after watching this video it looks appealing I've always got that for you. Then on top of that, you can check out my Discord and my Twitch stream. Let's go ahead and do our first impressions of the game. As of right now, I've played for about two hours. The only thing available in this build right now is like a procedural pre-alpha medium uh, system that we can play inside of. So not really much to fiddle with there. All these buttons are deactivated at the top, meaning there is no multiplayer, no LAN, no watch parties, no modding, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the options menu does exist, but there's basically nothing inside of it as of right now. Basically a very, very utilitarian build that they've put up on Epic here. Uh, so let's dive on in and we'll set up the game. As of right now, there's also not a whole lot to fiddle with inside of the game setup. You can do team games, uh, you can do free-for-all, but it's always going to be a 2v2 or a free-for-all. There's not really much you can change about that. There's a couple different victory options you can play around with, so you can change whether or not the galaxy orbits, thus changing kind of the warp gates that are going to be available to attack different targets. That's kind of an interesting idea. I like it. Uh, home planet victory right here basically decides like whether or not you lose when your home planet gets conquered. Uh, in a game where your home planet gets conquered, that's it. It's over if you have this enabled. If you have it disabled, they've got to track down every single one of your systems and wipe down every single one of your troops, uh, which means that you can have like colony ships kind of back capping and doing annoying things. Uh, I, I think the home planet victory is probably a smart idea. And then colonization victory basically just sets up a criteria as to whether or not the guy that has the most systems wins. There's basically like a bar, there's like a bar or like a meniscus you've got to hit and if you've got that many planets bomb bomb you win like that's it uh, for right now I am going to change up my colors I want to be the green guys that might be a little bit too dark though so we'll go for like a lighter green and we'll let these guys be alternate colors there's only one faction to play around with right now uh, it looks like there's going to be both factions are like races and also factions of those races later on because both of these are clickable uh, so I'm guessing you can be tech loyalists, tech rebels, there's probably going to be aliens and stuff, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, for right now, you pretty much everyone plays as tech, there's not really anything else to select. You can change difficulty levels on the AIs if you want, I'm probably just going to leave it on the default setting, and then we will jump on into a game proper. Let's go ahead and roll. All right, so now that we are inside our game proper, there it is, our beautiful planet of Ogeria. That's a bad name. I don't like Ogeria. Uh, let's name this thing, I don't know. we got to name our planet something endearing. Let's call it like the uh, the Duchess Floaty Winks. There we go. That looks good. Now we've anthropomorphized our planet. I feel like I can more effectively defend it. Uh, this is our home world. If it goes down, we lose. In our home world, we have different development levels like our commerce, our mining, 
our defense, our logistics. These are going to basically give us more resources to play around with. Commerce generates more money. Uh, mining generates more metal and crystals. Military is going to give us more pop cap when it comes to stationary defense and also garrisons that can protect the planet. And then logistics is going to give us more pop cap when it comes to the buildings and the civilian stations that we can put inside of this system. We've started out with two factories, a heavy and a light. The first thing we kind of want to do here is we want to go to our heavy factory and we want to manufacture our flagship. Uh, so we can get an Akan battle cruiser or we can get a coal battleship. Uh, the Akan battle cruiser is kind of like a jack of all trades support ship. It's all right. I very much like the coal battleship better though at the beginning of the game because the coal battleship is like a dedicated kill machine that is here to wipe out your enemies at all costs. Uh, and it just gives you a really, really nice kind of two piece punch along with your basic Corvette and like frigate fleets. Uh, to really, really get some damage across. The other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to upgrade my cash economy. I'd like to upgrade my mining economy. And I'd like to upgrade my logistics for right now. That's going to give us a little bit more money, a little bit more mining, and then a little bit more pop cap for our orbital stations. On top of that, there's also research that we can do here. And it seems like there is a lot of research available in this build for the tech faction. Uh, so there's some stuff to play around with. However, a lot of these researches are going to require us to have a certain number of research bases either nestled on planets or orbiting those planets in order to initiate them and craft them. This also works where you need to have a certain level of planetary development before you can deploy certain structures as well. So not only are we going to have to have the research, but we've also got to have our planet leveled up to a certain extent. And so that's why I'm working on it. Our capital ship is almost done. Let's take a look and see what our fleets have found. It looks like our scouts are going out and they are checking out. They found a volcanic world over here. And it looks like he's running from an entire death fleet. I don't think he's going to make it though. This appears to be some kind of rebels or like... Some kind of, I don't know, some kind of cartel or syndicate. It's basically an NPC faction. And yeah, oh, did he make it? No, he didn't. Did he? Oh, he did. He made it out. His hull is hanging on by tatters, but he made it. Uh, over here, it looks like our garrison fleet has begun skirmishing with these guys. The garrison fleet seems to kind of do its own thing. I can tell them what to do when they're outside the home system, but when they're inside the home system, they seem to get a little bit weird about taking orders. This is fine. As long as they are focused on the same target, they'll cause some damage over here. Maybe they'll take down an enemy ship. You can zoom in to see the action just in case you wanted to right here. And the camera actually does change its radius of rotation based on how zoomed you are, which is a really, really nice feature, actually. One thing I was worried about the first time I zoomed in on the action was that if I right-click and rotate, uh, it was actually going to have that really exaggerated pan and swing uh, that some games develop when they're not very polished, but in fact, it it tailors the amount of rotation you get to how zoomed in you are, and so it's pretty easy to watch the battles take place and have fun with it. Uh, other things you need to be aware of, we have our fleet supply, which is basically our pop cap for fleets. For I, won't yeah, I would really down. prefer I that you guys you stay here and stop throwing yourselves headlong into combat, but you are a garrison fleet, so like they seem to mostly be doing their own thing. Easy. Our battleship is done. What I would like to do is let's start building a normal standing fleet that I can actually give orders to, Let's call it comprised of, let's call it eight uh, frigates for right now. And then from there, I think we're just going to have to wait on our economy to develop a little bit. Look at this gorgeous capital ship. I've actually been a pretty big fan of most of the models of these ships that I've seen so far. Something about Sins of the Solar Empire, I've always liked their ship designs. They always look good to me. Like some games have very hideously ugly ships where it's just like, why is every ship in this game a triangle? It's just everything is a polished triangle. Like, why don't we have any more sophisticated hulls? I don't know. It's just the way it goes. Uh, we did get shot down over here. We will want to find whoever we scuffed up on this side, though. Actually, looks like we scored a couple of kills to me. I'll do my best. Let's go ahead and get our fire focused. This guy is a non-combatant unless he's bombing out planets and committing war crimes. And so we don't have to worry about him shooting back. This guy right here, though, that's who I want. I want his skull. And it looks like they're splitting their fire in between the two of us. More garrison fleets are jumping on in to help out. So that fight should be a guarantee, and we should be able to just send a colony ship over here and grab that asteroid. We've also got ourselves a volcanic planet. Unfortunately, with the volcanic planet, 
Uh, we're going to need to have a technology if we want to conquer that. Over here, we have another asteroid as well. And so, like, I'm okay with most of the options in front of us at the moment. How's our fleet building going? We've only made four out of the eight ships that I wanted to make for the escort fleet that's going to go with our capital ship. However, we do have 200 metal for right now, and I would like to get a surface research lab built. I don't know if building a surface research lab inside one of your slots actually changes the appearance of the planet, but I do hope that that's a feature that they consider for the future. It'd be really, really cool. If, like, for each level of, like, let's say that you choose to spend all of your population cap on research, the planet should look like a research planet. It should have, like, Dyson rings around it and stuff, and it should slowly build up to that as you build more and more research bases. As of right now, I think that the, the cities do spread as you level up the planet. Like, the little orange bits of the planet become more developed, but, like, if you made, like, a military planet, it'd be cool if there was lots of, like, derelict hulls and things floating around it. Or, like, the research planet has the Dyson rings. Things like that, you know? I don't know. Like, I, I just like thematic stuff like that that basically breaks apart the planets and makes them look unique. Did you guys secure victory for me over here? You did indeed. Huzzah. Hip, hip, huzzah. Uh, let's go ahead, and as soon as this is done, I'm going to need a colony craft as well so that we can start grabbing territory. And I don't know if our... Are they going... Where are they? I want them to go south. So if I can get this fleet to kind of start hectoring whoever's south of us. What now? And it looks like that's what they're already doing. We'll go ahead and send the main fleet in to reinforce them as yeah, well. Commander. Just in case the fight is a little bit thicker. The UI does tell you how many enemies are going to be here. It's how filled this little meter is. And you'll notice that other meters will enter into the area as well as there's multiple factions in the area. So if there's three factions in the area, you'd have kind of like a three quarters of a circle around the planet. With each chunk of it being filled with our fleets and their associated colors as you can see right here. Anyways, we'll send them on in and we'll kind of see how this whole thing goes. Okay, the first of our expeditionary fleets have arrived. It looks like the enemy is not sitting on too much. And the main body of the fleet has arrived. Let's go ahead and we'll link up and we'll start shooting this bad boy over here. We want to have focused fire. This is going to be your first opportunity to see our battleship begin firing at the enemy. Uh, the battleships and the bigger craft, they do have to have a facing that they need to rotate into, as you can see. And so he's now laying down some pretty heavy fire on the enemy. If we take losses here, I'd kind of be surprised. Because he's the TDN Novik. That's a terrible name, dude. We gotta we gotta name our ship something more awesome. Can I name it? Let's let's call it the the NCS Crack Smasher. We're in space. Coming for your booty crack. Alright, so now that the crack hath been smashed, uh, we're gonna leave these guys down here. Did I get my colony ship? I did. Send my little beetle buddy on down here. Yeah, sure. I want Caldaria. I'm going to rename it, obviously. Something that's more in line with my great and powerful Imperium. But, you know, for now, we'll go ahead and grab it. And I'm going to leave... What now? Let's call yeah, it... Let's order. send the attachment fleet. I so the escort fleet is going to go over to Veritas. We're going to leave our capital yeah, ship here, though. Although we're going to leave him within jump range of the yeah, gate better. in case he needs to run. Uh, to protect this while we colonize it and we develop out its economy. We are sitting on a little bit of money right now. There's probably things we can do about that. I'm going to go ahead and deploy myself. Let's get level 3 excavation so I can start exploiting all of these asteroids that are around our planets, actually. I'd like to get my metal consumption down. Metal seems to be going poorly for me right now. Uh, this little guy, because he's got colonized highlighted inside of his abilities... He will just colonize this on his own, and we shouldn't have to do anything with it. Uh, we can also designate abilities here, so we can get Experimental Beam. Uh, we can get Fusilad. We can get Adaptive Force Field, or we can get Finest Hour. I want the Death Ray. Give me the Death Ray. I believe that we've earned Death Ray. And if you were paying attention, you may have noticed that he fired a little colony pod over there to take over it. Uh, you're going to go take Veritas. We need to rename this planet. Caldaria is a terrible name for a planet. Instead, we will name it Doug. That's a way better name for a planet. All right. And so while we're here, we probably want Doug to generate some kind of income for us. Because as of right now, Doug is costing us money. And that's a bummer. Doug's upkeep is a little bit rough. Doug has expensive tastes, and Doug's not ready to apologize about it yet. However, taking these asteroid fields... Actually, there's only two harvestable asteroids out here. 
it may not be worth dumping a whole bunch of resources into in order to make it work. Uh, your capital ships, they do level up. They do have RPG mechanics. Uh, they've got equipment that you can equip on them. They also, as they kill enemies, they level up and get access to all of their abilities, in case you were wondering. Give the order. I'll do my uh, you guys come on in and get ready to defend the planet over here. I'm assuming that the garrison fleet is probably harassing somebody, shooting guns at somebody, generally being a nuisance towards somebody. I don't know. Actually, I don't see our garrison fleet around. Eh, looks like our garrison fleet finally... Yeah, it looks like they gave up. I guess they don't want the smoke over at this planet. I don't even know what kind of planet it is. We should probably go look. I mean, we've got so many lava planets, though, that I'm guessing we're probably going to want to research uh, the ability to... We're probably going to want to research the ability to colonize lava planets. Uh, let's go ahead, and we have two asteroids ready to go. It doesn't cost us anything to exploit these asteroids. Each asteroid should give us, I think, 0.4 production towards metal. And as you can see, there's a little station on top of the asteroid now. Done. Uh, we'll probably want to do the same thing over here, just to make our economy a little bit stronger. I'm a little bit dubious on the amount of cash it wants me to dump into this place in order to get it up and running as a mining operation. So I may leave it sitting for a little bit, maybe militarize it, and just use it as a buffer zone maybe, or like as a buffer system, I don't know. Either way, we've got two nice chokes on either side that are going to secure this little six realm area for us without too many issues. Yeah, let's start looking into maybe colonizing planets. Uh, so if we want volcanic colonization, we need level two research which I don't think should be too difficult to take care of. Uh, for level two research, we're building a lot of exterior stations right now. Let's call it, I can probably afford an orbital station. Let's go ahead and put in an orbital station right there. It's not gonna build until we get done with all of our asteroid mining, but it'll do for right now. I would like to pull back the main fleet and just see what that is because it will affect the way that I research but I don't particularly want to leave this place abandoned either. Oh, we already colonized it. Very nice. Let's go ahead and fix our economy then. We'll go ahead and kind of like work on it. Maybe we'll try to put trade posts out here in the asteroid belt to negate the penalty that we're getting from both of these. Because these places are actively costing us money to function. So we're going to have to pick up the slack either on our economy at our home planet or on our economy by using up their one living slot uh, in order to build like a trade post or whatever. All right, so how are we looking now? We're still we're still losing. Well, we're not losing money. We break even. Now let's go ahead and get logistics one over here, and then we will get logistics one over here. Oh, I need four hundred and twenty-five buckaroonies. So I guess we won't do that right now. I've got no, I've got no ducats. We didn't name this planet either. What should I name this planet? We'll name this planet Trent. There we go. We, we have named our asteroid Trent, and he will be the best asteroid to ever asteroid. I don't, I don't know if you can verbalize asteroid. I don't know. I don't know if you can convert that into a verb. Uh, we can do research labs, or we can focus on researching, and ooh, a smuggler's den, huh? What does a smuggler's den do? Increased credit, trade income, and grants a bonus to bidding on auctions from pirate NPCs. Yeah, I vaguely remember that from the first game where, like, you had to pay off pirates or whatever. They would attack you. Let's go for... It actually looks like we can't get a financial center here or, like, a trade post. So I guess we won't do that. Uh, I guess I'll convert these over. They're interior in my system. So, like, my thinking is we just use them to get more research bases for now, and then we can always scuttle a research base later on if we end up not needing it. So there we go. We should have level 2 research pretty soon. By the time that's done, volcanic colonization will probably be ready to go, and we more than likely want to grab that guy. And we also need to scout and figure out what this is over here. I don't really want to move my fleets around though right now. It concerns me. Uh, we also need to get 
Better fleet supply. Yeah, let's get basic provisioning as our research. Uh, you can queue up research in this game. You're not limited to one research. However, we are limited by poverty right now. And so that's limiting the research that I can put down range. For the moment, things seem to be okay. All right, now we have level three provisioning. Or I'm sorry, we have level three research. We should be able to play around with some other things. I definitely am going to need to develop out my fleet. There we go. Our supplies up to 250. Uh, let's go ahead and I would like to secure... I'm going to grab the lava planet pretty soon, so we probably want to scout that. Active. And just kind of see what's over here. Easily done. Oh, we already know what's over there. A large fleet. That's okay. Like Fair enough. Uh, let's create our own large fleet, shall we? Probably going to take us a few minutes to get it put together, but I'm all right with it. I did send one lone scout to go check and see what's inside this system over here because it may be a better target. Like, what if it's a Terran planet or something, you know? Another volcanic planet. What now? Okay. I can't stand right it. Now. Volcanic planets. All right. So basically, we want to take volcanic research. Otherwise, we're not really going to be able to pick up any of the planets in our periphery. That's going to be more or less a necessity. Base jump underway. Uh, with the fleets that I have available over here, yeah, what have we built up so far? Uh, we've built up a couple of guys. We've got three little Corvettes over here. I have no doubt that we're probably going to need more, though. So let's continue to get more. I'm going to go ahead, since I haven't really developed this planet anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pull back. I don't really care if I lose it. I'm going to go ahead and pull back my, my battle cruiser over to here. And we're going to knock out this volcanic place. Oh, God, I've lost my planet. There it is. All right, I'm going to knock out this volcanic planet first that's over on the right-hand side. But what's it going to set me back to get volcanic colonization? Uh, it's not that expensive, actually. It's not, it's not too terrible. We should be able to manage it. I've been, I've been trying to work on my credit economy. My my credit, as with real life, my, my intergalactic credit score is just terrible, dude. I can't even buy a phone. All right? That's how bad my credit score is in space. All I wanted to do was get that slick, like, Galaxy 927, whatever iteration they're on. What now? Alas. My credit score hath hoisted me once more. All right. Let's send these guys in here and see if we can deal with some of these turds. There go our boys in green, ready to defend our great and powerful trade conglomerate from the enemies of commerce. Go get them, boys. Oh, it was a sneak attack. All right, let's go ahead and take this guy. Oh, my God, he used the death ray. My man. Yeah, dude, I'm in full support of egregious space capitalist death rays. I mean, if you're not using your egregious exploitative space capitalism to build death rays, like, what are we even doing here? What is the point of all this? Why have we settled into this niche? Okay, job's done. Uh, let's go ahead and we will send you guys back over to one of the undefended sectors. And is my colony ship, is it going to notice that there's an undefended? No, it doesn't. Okay. I didn't know if it would auto-colonize from, like, even further away. And the good news is we made a lot of money while I was fighting that battle. So let's go up to Commerce Level 5 on Duchess Floaty Winks. Uh, our new planet is also going to need a name. I don't know what I want to name him, but at some point I will name him. Uh, then what I'd like to do is I'd like to... Normally, from what I remember in Sins of a Solar Empire, you want to build kind of at... You want to build such that your territory is kind of like a peninsula with a choke point at it. I remember that being a big part of whether or not my, my plays actually worked in Sins of a Solar Empire. Unfortunately, we may have to spread it around a little bit. We don't have any reasonably accessible choke points from the outside. Like, I, I think we're already limited to kind of, like, three separate areas of protecting ourselves, and so, meh. And looky there. Our little man's headed on over to colonize this thing. Can you imagine, dude? You leave your beautiful Terran lush world. And you're like, new opportunities on a new planet. And then they just, like, deploy you deep down inside of Vulcan's asshole. I'm like, yeah, you just live in a river of fire now. Welcome to hell. Get to the mining. I, I would be a little bit upset, me personally. I'd be like, this is this is this is not 
This is not as nice as the place where I used to live. There we go. He just fired the little colonization pod. So as far as, like, lava planets go, how terrible are they? Uh, pretty terrible. They're not great. They have a lot of their commerce disabled. Um, we may want to think about whether or not we actually want to grab these from now on. I've never colonized a lava planet before. Maybe we can terraform it, though, or something. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a game like this had the ability to terraform. Either way, it's back in a little pocket, and maybe I can develop it out to do something. I don't know. We've got three metal asteroids over here, so that'd give us another 1.2 trickle of metal production. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll debate with myself what is worth it versus what isn't. We don't really need to set this place up for military, so I guess we'll just go for logistics for right now. Maybe get a level or two of excavation to see if we can find any alien artifacts or something uh, to make this place worth it. Like, maybe, who knows? Maybe we find, like, a subterranean terraforming installation or something, and we can pay resources to convert that into, like, a desert world instead of a, a lava planet. There does seem to be a lot of lava planet going around right now, though. Uh, so if we get the planet up to level four, it looks like it has no upkeep. So should probably work on that. I'll probably just throw some excavation at it. I think we've got four development lined up. Looks like we get a tactical relay, but I don't really want to use this place for... If I have a level 10 planet, I can have a low orbit administrative station to aid in supporting more facilities. Oh, nice. That'll give us free civilian slots. It looks like we can also get a garrison recruitment center uh, that produces basically AI garrison ships that just fly around being a nuisance. Not to me, but to the enemy. Link uh, let's go ahead and jump this fleet That's more like over to here, and we will take over that bad boy as well. And I should probably get the colony ship moving uh, before to too long. Transmission received. Yep, Stand just be on your way. Stop. Hopefully you're not way faster than my military fleet. Because if you are... If you find yourself in a large circle of, like, furiously drooling space pirates, run. Uh, that's my that's my military advice to you, little civilians. I do like that warpway effect. That looks pretty good. All right, well, we'll take it on over to the left, and this is Sins of a Solar Empire 2. I'm glad to see the game get a sequel. I really, really liked the last one. Obviously, for a $40 game, it's only got one faction inside right now. And while they seem to be fairly fleshed out, and the game seems to be reasonably polished, like I haven't had any bugs or any frame drops or anything else while I've been playing it, that being said, like 60% of the content is not here yet. And to be fair, the developers put that in the early access banner that's up on the Epic page right now, being like, hey, only get involved if you understand this is very, very, very early on and you want to help out and give suggestions and things of that nature. So I feel like it's appropriately labeled. At $40, I don't know if it was it would be something that I would jump into. I'm usually a fan of kind of wave pricing. And so what I mean by that is like when it comes out in early access, it's 20 bucks, and each time they add a new faction, the price goes up by like 10 bucks. I feel like that's always really, really good because it incentivizes the hardcore fans that supported the game early and gave kind of the funding for the game to keep being worked on. And they get a little bit of a discount for sort of being like alpha or beta testers or whatever else. But unfortunately, that's not the case. What I can say, though, is that the UI, I found it to be fairly tasteful. There's little things I'd like to see added and obviously things that are not done with the UI as of right now. But I did like it. The game functioned perfectly fine. And honestly, for like a technical alpha, it doesn't seem to have too many bugs or polish issues. So on that front, I think the game looks really, really promising. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how the game develops and moves along because I did like the previous title quite a bit. And I did play it a lot that one summer oh so long ago and I'm always a fan of anything with lots of battle cruisers and frigates slugging it out for control of planets and frankly there's not a whole lot of RTS kind of grand strategy hybrids out there and Sins of the Solar Empire is one of the ones that I think did it absolutely right and earned itself kind of a cult following spot for that reason. Uh, this wasn't really an indie game. This is a game that's made by Stardock and you know 
companies that have been around for a long while, but I did want to show it off because I liked the first game quite a bit, and I thought you guys might like it as well. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today on the chopping block, we've got ourselves Sins of a Solar Empire 2. Tomorrow, we will more than likely have something else. Thank you for choosing to spend your time here. I appreciate the luxury of your attention, and I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie or video game skillet, I guess. Bye, everybody.